Hi, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live with Pastor Jeff. I'm Jeff Maggard. I'm the pastor of Sulphur Christian Church in Sulphur, Kentucky, uh, independent Christian church. And uh, so tonight is our first Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff of 2021. And it's a pretty significant day in Christian history as far as it goes. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, a couple of announcements right off the bat is board members, uh, 6.30, Wednesday, January 18th, Monday. Monday, January 18th, we will be having a board meeting at 6.30. Board meeting, 6.30. Monday, the 18th. So anyway, uh, would we'll love to have everybody out that will be in person at the church. Please bring a mask and pre please uh, respect uh, people with social distancing board members. I know you will. Uh, I'm preaching to the choir there. G good evening, David. And uh, so just m make sure board members you have that on your calendar. Also, I'm very excited. One of my best friends in the whole world, Mike Berry, from Southeast Christian Church is going to be here on January 20th. That's a few weeks from now on a Wednesday night. He'll be here with uh, us on uh, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff. And uh, we're going to be talking about how ways, creative ways, we can connect to our neighbors, to our community. And uh, it'll be great. And don't tell anybody, but uh, we might even be giving some books away that night. So uh, just uh, just a heads up for uh, our little group here uh, that uh, make sure you're watching on January 20th uh, so that uh, you might have a chance to get something for free. So anyway, uh, just make sure uh, you tune in on January 20th or that week uh, for Mike Berry, uh, dear friend and... Um, a community pastor at Southeast Christian Church in LaGrange. Uh, as you well know, many of you who watch know that we uh, have a weekly prayer focus. And this week, our weekly prayer focus is for folks working on resolutions. Yes, it's that time of year. Let's see, it's the 6th. So uh, some of you might, <laughs> might not be doing well yet, but that's okay. That's okay. So uh, just keep folks trying to work on resolutions. You know, folks try to lose weight, try to stop this and that and, and change their lives and, and uh, pray more, read the Bible more. There's all kinds of resolutions that we make at the beginning of the year. Well, we as believers, how can we help them? Well, we can encourage them, but we can also pray for them that they will be able to reach goals. And, and folks out there, if you're making resolutions or have made resolutions, uh, make sure you're setting realistic goals for yourself. You, you don't try to change the world all in the first month of a new year. Uh, pick something out that's reasonable set reasonable goals for yourself and then when you reach a reasonable goal then you can recalculate where do I want to go from here so just a word of encouragement to you all out there that have revol res resolutions and maybe revolutions uh, on your mind that you're working on and trust that we're praying for you on those resolutions to try to help you um, do whatever it is that you're working on, losing weight, quit smoking, quit drinking, read the Bible more, read more, period, uh, have better relationships with, with family and friends. Whatever your resolutions are for this year, know that we're praying for you, that those will be successful and that we're encouraging you. And uh, we're here for you if you need moral support or if you need help in any way. Uh, so our our prayer focus is for people working on their resolutions. Uh, also, please keep in mind uh, in your prayers, Dennis and Kathy Goff. Uh, Dennis had an ATV accident this week. 
uh, Kathy has a severe infection. Uh, if you're not sure who um, Dennis and Kathy Goff are, well, they're Michelle Goff's in-laws. So make sure you keep them in your prayers as Dennis recovers from his injuries with the ATV accident. And for Kathy, who has a severe infection uh, in the hospital. So make sure you're keeping them in your prayers. Uh, also, the Drake family, tragic loss. Uh, a former co-worker with Jordan Holden and uh, keep uh, their, the, the Drake family. Scott Drake passed away uh, from COVID-19. Please keep his family. He was a very loved member of the community. And uh, so keep his family and friends in your prayer as they, as they mourn his loss. Also continue to keep uh, baby Knox Owens in your prayers. Uh, Logan DeWitt, young child battling cancer, keep her in your prayers. Also, if you would, please keep uh, Aaron and Shelly Moore and their family. Um, they, they are the reason several uh, children, members of from their family, and uh, you know, their CPS, and there's lots of dynamics there involved, many of us in the community understand that grandparents and, and family raising other people's kids, it's almost an epidemic. And just please keep uh, the Moore family and the kids they're caring for in your prayers would be greatly appreciated. Also, um, Margie Fascio, whose father passed away from COVID-19, uh, our dear friend, brother, Bob Holden, uh, as he continues to recover from surgery. Uh, Christian Sophia and Annalise Davis, uh, financial uh, burdens that come with her being a cancer patient and just for her health, of course, of course, pray for her health, for healing and help for them. Uh, continue to keep Dave Conger's family, his wife, in your prayers, his brother Larry and his sister and their whole her whole family had all have COVID, so keep them all in your prayers if you would, please. Um, also keep Tony and Vicky in your prayers as Vicky's lost uh, a family member, a cousin, and also a dear, dear friend uh, within the last couple of weeks. Blanca Wade, uh, one of our Friends from Life Church uh, lost her mother and that whole family. If you keep them in your prayers, and if you see other prayer requests as they scroll up, uh, also you know add those to your prayer list and and pray for them as well. So uh, join me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we pray that this COVID thing is so crazy and there's so many people getting sick and so many people dying from it. And Father God, hey, percentages don't mean anything with it, somebody you love that's passed away. So Father God, let's not discredit the, the impact that this disease, this virus has had on our culture and our society. Father God, Lord Jesus, help us to keep our eyes on you, to stay focused on you as we continue to go through the battleground of the coronavirus, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray for our government, for our leaders, and for us, the voters, uh, the people of the United States. Father God, Lord Jesus, if, if we can't unite in anything else, Lord Jesus, help us to unite in prayer and following and loving you, Father God, trusting you for answers. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray for Bob. Continue to heal him. Be with Sophia and Christian and Annalise, the Davis family. Father God, we pray and lift them up to you, Lord. We pray for the Drake family as, as they mourn and grieve uh, over Scott's passing, Lord Jesus. But Father God, again, help us keep our eyes on you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, there's just so many. Lord, we pray for the Logan DeWitt. We pray for Aaron and Shelly Moore. And Father God, we lift up everyone, Margie Fascio and, and so many others that we've mentioned here, Father God. And Lord Jesus, we raise them up to you now for healing, help, comfort. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who have made resolutions of one kind or another to start out this new year. And Father God, we pray for encouragement for them, for strength. 
for fortitude, for discipline, for all the things that it takes to succeed, Lord Jesus. And 99.9% of resolutions are good things. And Lord Jesus, we just pray and for help for the folks and that they would take it beyond a resolution with themselves or maybe even with their families to more of a covenant with you. Lord Jesus, help us all to invite you in to help us with the things we struggle with because 90% of the time we will fail on our own. Lord Jesus, we need you to come in beside us, alongside us, and help us with our eating habits, our exercise, our weight, our, our bad habits that we have, the, the, the things that we want to do to improve ourselves, read the Bible more, pray more, read more books, help our relationships connect with people better. Whatever our resolutions are, Father God, we pray you come alongside us and alongside our friends and our family as, as we continue to try to improve and get better. Lord Jesus, for those folks out there that are lost and unsaved, Lord Jesus, I pray to be resolute in praying for them and showing them Jesus. Lord Jesus, help us to be strong and effective in our ministries, in our witnessing, in, in our love for people. And Lord Jesus, to be great listeners, to be quick to listen and slow to speak, Father God, when people need us. Lord, we praise you and thank you. In your holy, amazing name we pray. Amen. Uh, good evening to those you who have just joined in. Uh, but it, uh, again, our, our prayer focus is for folks working on resolutions, and that's a lot of us. We're, we all have things we can work on for sure. So with it being New Year still, we're within the first week, uh, I would like um, for you to enjoy the jokes of the week. And they have a little bit to do with resolutions and the new year. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. So here we go. The first joke of 2021. Did you hear about the marathon participant who thought he was a comedian? Did you hear about that him? The marathon participant who thought he was a comedian. He was always telling running jokes. All right. So this is for my intellectuals out there, okay? For, for my really top-of-the-line thinkers out there, this is for you, all right? And I know I'll only have to give you a second to figure this one out. Where is New Year's mathematical? Where is New Year's Mathematical. Times square. Mathematical. Mm -hmm. Mathematical. Times square. Gotcha. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks. Last one. Last one of the today of the first jokes of 2021. What is a Christian's favorite cheese? Speaking resolutions, eating right. Do, 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 do. What is a Christian's favorite cheese? Well, Swiss, of course. Why? Because it's holy. Hey, I thought I might as well start out the year with some cheesy jokes. Oh, oh, oh. I killed myself. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so there you go. Moving on. So what I really, really, really wanted to talk about tonight, and I prefaced this at the beginning, uh, that today is a significant day in the Christian calendar. Maybe not all of us know about it, because uh, it's not in some churches it's highly emphasized, and in other churches it's not. But today is actually the day of Epiphany, January 6th. So, you know, many of us associate epiphany with the three wise men, the magi, the three kings, 
uh, and that image of three men, men bearing gifts as they followed the great star by night. And even in some cultures, Epiphany is known as the Day of the Kings. The Day of the Kings, Epiphany. Uh, or uh, to our Spanish speaking folks, Dia de los Reyes. And I know I didn't say that very well, but please don't expect me to. But anyway, that, there you go. The, the Day of the Kings, the a Day of Epiphany. And it's also known, did you know this? If you count the days from Christmas, today is the 12th day of Christmas. The 12th day. So today in the liturgical calendar, in, in Christian tradition, today is the 12th day of Christmas and uh, the last day of of Christmas from December 25th to January 6th, the 12 days of Christmas, you know, and th this day has a special meaning for, for many reasons. And even several branches of Christianity uh, of the faith even regard January 6th or January 7th as the day of Christ's birth. Uh, that's really neither here nor there. We all agree he was the Messiah. He was born the King and we all, uh, at least, though probably those watching agree that, that we don't, maybe not know the exact date, but we celebrate it because it's the truth. So the word epiphany means appearance or manifestation, okay? Maybe you think about it this way, okay? An epiphany is when, bing, the light bulb goes off. Uh, or uh, my friend Kyle Eidelman used to say the aha moment. Uh, uh, aha moment. Aha. Epiphany means aha. The manifestation of something, the appearance of something. And uh, epiphany is along the same lines as eureka or aha, like I said a minute ago. Uh, sometimes, uh, like I said, we, we kind of get the idea of the light bulb turn on or to be able to see something that once was hidden. To see something that once was hidden from view. So all the text in Christendom uh, point to six Sundays after the Epiphany and dramatize the many ways that people come to understand who Jesus was. Who was Jesus? So they teach us that through his baptism, uh, the miracle of changing the wine, water into wine at the wedding, or uh, through his declaration in his hometown, I am the Son of God. The miracle at the wedding, all those things, uh, thus this ever-widening circle of revelation really begins outside of Judaism. See, and that's what's important for us, for us poor old Gentiles, is yes, we need to read and understand and connect with the Old Testament. But in order for us to really, really believe and understand that Jesus wasn't just another Jew, he expanded the realm of Judaism uh, into Christianity for us Gentiles as well, and Greeks, and everyone, for everyone. So, with the Magi being presented Jesus, presenting themselves to him, and essentially him to them, it begins the history of Christendom for us, for us. So, who were these Magi? Well, Many versions of the Bible refer to them as, as wise men or magi or the three kings. And we often forget that these wise men, these magi, these three kings were not Jewish. They were not Jews at all. They were non-Jews. And older sources even suggest that they were princely descendants of one of the tribes of Medes, uh, known for their knowledge of the stars or astronomy. 
uh, scientists who, who studied the stars. And as we know now, in modern times, the stars were used for so many different things. Travel, navigation, you know, even the movement of the planets and, and that are signs to us as believers that God is real and he has control over even the bodies in the sky. It's important for us to understand and believe that God is the God of the universe and everything. So what can we learn from these wise men? You know, the Bible tells us you should seek out wisdom from wise people. So how can we learn from the wise men? First of all, understand the wise men began their journey because of what they believed. The wise men began their journey because of what they believed. You know, at that time, understand, lots of people were looking for a sign, a sign of the coming of the Messiah. Now, these guys were scientists, astronomers that were looking, looking, paying attention for signs in the heavens. And many great prophecies spoke of a great king being born under the sign of a star. That great king was Jesus. So the Magi saw something that convinced them that the long-awaited special king was coming. They saw that sign, and they, in their wisdom, decided to follow it. Our history tells us and historians tell us that the Jews, the Romans, and the Persians were all watching the skies about that time. People had their eyes looking to the heavens. Remember not long ago on December 21st, ancient history, right? We were all looking for the conjunction. Well, and some people even called it the Star of Bethlehem. But we all went outside, many of us, most of us, went outside to look at this. And for some folks, it was underwhelming. But for some of us, we looked and we saw that it was so much brighter than any other star in the heavens. And, you know, I looked up at that and I thought, if God told me to look for a sign in the heavens, I would probably see that and notice that it was different. And that's very important. So looking for signs for the birth of an extraordinary king, a few years before, or around 11 BC, Halley's Comet had been seen. And there were other stellar phenomenons, including a bright star, Sirius. You've heard of Sirius, not Sirius Radio, Sirius the Star. A great bright star which appeared brightly in the daytime instead of at night. And the wise men could have easily mistaken those. And maybe they researched it. Maybe they looked into it. And maybe it wasn't what, quite what they were looking for. So may God give us all, all inspiration this year all inspiration for their journey. The wise men saw the star and they looked at that opportunity to begin a journey. And they did. They began the journey. So may God give us all inspiration this year for our journey this year. So the second thing is that the wise men were willing to follow what they had seen into unknown territory. They did their research. They started the journey because they believed that that star would lead them to the foretold king, which of course it did. Second, the wise men were willing to follow the what they saw into unknown territory. Days and days, weeks and weeks journey. So their journey took them outside of their country country, took them outside of their comfort zone. The wise men risk consequences of disobeying Herod. 
Just think about what Herod might have done to the wise men if he would have caught them. Probably wouldn't have gone very well, right? As we know, he was not a very kind man. He was known to behave like a madman when he was provoked, when he was disobeyed. So they returned to their country another way, around, away from Herod. Very important to understand. Again, they were wise men, okay? The Christian journey is often, for us, an off-road experience. My brother, my fellow pastor, uh, Carl, uh, was out today hiking. And uh, Carl Silcox. And he, he was out hiking, hiking in the woods to a, a place maybe he had never been before. But to experience God and have closeness with God, sometimes we have to go off-road. Sometimes it's an off-road excursion that God takes us on in our journey, and we need to be ready for that. Thirdly, the wise men were committed to the journey. Wherever the star led, they were going to go. Wherever that star went, the wise men were going to go. The wise men had set out to find a newborn king by following a star and ended up finding a baby born to young, relatively poor parents. You know, not exactly what they expected. And, and not exactly what befit their dignity as priests or wise men or kings or however you want to look at it wasn't, I don't think, what they expected to find. But they found him, and they knew it was him. They knew when they saw baby Jesus because of the power that flowed out of him and into them. He knew. They knew what was happening. The wise men knew they had made the right choice in following the star. So in this coming year, we need to look to heaven for guidance. Heavenly guidance is what we need. And we need to have comfort and, and we need to accept God's blessings in whatever way we find him. Just as the wise men accepted that their long, expensive journey had led them to a baby born to young relatively poor parents, inexperienced parents, who lived on the poor side of town. We need to make sure we understand we're finding the Messiah. We're finding the King. We need to look deeper. We need to find more of us in Him and more of Him in us in this next year. Let me tell you something. Another thing, how can we emulate what the wise men did? We need to seek him. We need to search him out. Regardless of the dangers, regardless of the cost, regardless of what we have to change or give up, uh, to find that when we find him, it'll be worth it. And he'll be majestic and wonderful and great, even greater than we can imagine when we find him. Yes. We need to bring him gifts. Now, they did the thing that people in the East or in Africa or India uh, would do when they visited royalty. They brought gifts. They brought gifts to him. Gold was the kind of gift that you brought to a king. Frankincense was the kind of gift you would bring to a priest. And, and myrrh was given to someone who was about to die. So you see the significance from the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Even at his young, young, young age, one of the wise men brought myrrh so that it would signify that they were worshiping him as royalty, but they also knew from the prophecies what would have to happen that he would sacrifice himself for all mankind, then they came to honor and worship him there. 
So on this 12th day, or, or on this Three Kings Day, whichever you choose to call it, the 12th day of Christmas, uh, Three Kings Day, Epiphany Day, whatever you want to call it, think of the gift that you could offer God in this coming year. You know, I sang a song last week in the bleak mend winter. It says, if I were a shepherd, I'd bring a sheep. If I was a wise man, I'd bring gold. But what could I bring him? I could bring him my heart. So wherever you are in your relationship with Jesus, think about what kind of gifts that you can bring him this year. Maybe it's your heart. Maybe that's something you've never given to him. Maybe it's time more time and more attention to your King, your Savior, your Lord, your majestic Jesus. Maybe it's the gift of your talents, the things that you're good at, the things that he's made you good at. Maybe you can, can apply your talents to helping people, to helping the kingdom. Maybe your service service in the community like we're going to talk about with uh, Mike Berry here in a few weeks. Maybe service, time, talent, service. How about your witness and your testimony? Believers that have believed for a long time, who have been through a lot but have seen God walk beside them in and through so many things and so many circumstances, maybe, just maybe, this year you can give him the gift of your witness and your testimony to people who need to hear it. How about the gift of devotion and undying love? Maybe we can give him that, that gift, love and devotion to him. Maybe go deeper, lean more into him. Maybe that's what. But for the wise men and for us, the, the greatest gift comes to us in the form of realization that the wise men were the first Gentiles to recognize that Jesus belongs to everyone the wise men were the first Gentiles to know and understand that Jesus came for all of us, for every one of us. Good news is for everybody, not just for a select few. And it's so important for us to understand that. And it's so important for us to live that. Yes, folks, Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died and Jesus rose again for every single person on this planet. The wise men, those three wise men, really figured it out for the rest of us. So we need to remember that when we're dealing with other people. We need to make sure we're kind even when we don't agree with people, even when things politically or in the world don't seem to be going our way, we need to stop and rethink. And we kneel, need to kneel before that baby in the manger too and understand that he's here for all of us. And that's really, really important for us in helping to make the world a better place. We can be wise people too. So seek him out. Search for him. Regardless of what it costs. Seek him out. Devote yourself to the journey. Commit yourself to the journey. And pray and consider what gift can I give him. Thank you all for joining me again here tonight on Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff, Sulphur Christian Church, and would love to see you this Sunday. Um, we will be online here at Facebook Live again at 11 a.m. this Sunday morning. 
uh, and we're going to continue on our sermon series talking about the way God speaks to us. And already we know God speaks to us through his word, the physical Bible that he gave us to learn from and to study and to get closer to him with. And also we know that his words through Jesus Christ became the living word. And so those words in red in your Bible are particularly important. They're all important. But literally, when Jesus spoke, God spoke. So we need to make sure we're focusing on that. And also that God speaks to us still through visions, visions and dreams. And maybe we can count them off for some reason as coincidence, but we need to be very mindful and discern when God is speaking to us and showing us things. So continue this Sunday morning. We will talk more about the ways that God speaks with us. Until then, meditate and think on what gifts you can bring to the King. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, make us wise people wise men and wise women. And Lord Jesus, Father God, show us how we can commit to the journey, the search for you. No matter how long we've known you, we need to continue to seek you and search for you and learn about you, Father God, and be transformed. Lord Jesus, help us to make sure we're committing deeply to the journey of finding you. And when we find you and we find more of you, Father God, Lord Jesus, help us to determine what gift can we give to you, the gift of our time, our service, our talents, our love, and our devotion, Lord Jesus, and maybe even our finances. Father God, Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you. Be with everybody on our prayer list, everyone we've mentioned and everyone that, that we haven't yet. But Father God, you know. And Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful, wonderful night you've allowed us to spend together. And Lord Jesus, be with all of us. Help us, Lord. Lead us and guide us. In your precious, holy, amazing, wonderful, incredible, awesome name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. So good to see you and uh, praying for you. Love you. And I'll see you real, real soon.